So these are the kinds of episodes that are definitely slower, but they're the episodes that really cement a show in sticking with me for at least a couple of seasons, if not maybe a couple of years, potentially. And the reason being is that when you look at the journey Leos went through over from starting being tossed away from humanity, joining the enemy side, but, you know, still feeling like he was a generally good dude who didn't want to destroy things just for simple revenge, to get an episode like this and to truly see the moment that cemented in his mind if there was a way out to take it, and that being Abrad himself, I mean, what an incredible way to really sell us before the big reveal. Because at first, given how they started the episode, given the promotion, the fact that Leo's secrets need to be revealed, I was like, oh, episode 8, this is the episode. This is the episode that the cat will be out of the bag and everyone will know the truth for sure. But instead, they gave us this backstory. And was it the most visually impressive backstory? No. Was it the most exciting backstory? No. But was it a very important backstory? Yes. From the voice acting, with his very emotionless Leo, to a very bubbly and almost like, I don't know, he just kind of felt like the bro you always wanted to be around Abrad. I love the fact that this man just got screwed over, and for seeing how screwed Leo gets in the future of where the backstory is currently at anyway, it was nice to have a man who just, like, he felt honest. He was like, shit, I got screwed. There was a big-ass portal. We were supposed to be going to a deserted island. Instead, we got dropped into Tokyo, and by the time I tried to get back, the portal was closed. It just feels like a big-ass war is happening, and the little guy got screwed. And the fact that Leo doesn't just simply even kill in that in those moments, right? Like, the fact that he's literally the weakest out of the super soldiers, and the fact that he firmly believes that, you know, his mission is to just live and die by his code, and there is no war, that's that. But I think what this show has done really well, among other military S shows in recent anime memory, is the PTSD of coming home and having no place to go for soldiers coming home from a war, so to speak. A very common, like, thought that I see pop up throughout shows like 86, I've even seen it here, is, you know, people who have served in the military talking about their own experiences of people they've seen or even stuff they've experienced, and how even though it's an anime with goblins and orcs and demons and stuff, the core idea of being tossed away after it's over with no support is something that everyone experiences or a good majority coming home from serving on the battlefield. And I love how they're using it in such a fantasy element, but still keeping it grounded with what people have to experience even today in today's age with militaries, right? And I think that's what makes it so great is that Abrad was really trying to get that through earlier, being like, my man, you know, that's not a way to live. That if there's ever a chance for you to get out of this, please take it because he clearly recognized that shit, like, you know, I'm, this might be my last day on Earth, and if this dude is as good of a genuine guy as I think he is, I hope he finds happiness someday. And we know it takes many wars and many years later for that to happen, but I love the fact of, throughout that reflecting, seeing what was the first thing that truly got to him, and the fact that he held on to it for all those years. I remember there was a lot of people back in the first couple of episodes when we didn't know a whole lot about what led Leo to truly be ostracized, why he was tossed away after saving. But the fact that, you know, over the past couple of episodes, we've really grown to understand that he was happy about that. So to have almost this missing link, the thing that was in his mind for all these years, if there's a chance, if humanity says they don't need me, I get to make my own choice. Because he was built with a purpose. He would never betray that code unless there was a reason to do so. And if the leader of your nation that you're protecting says, we don't need you, that's not a sign of revenge, that's a sign of relief. Like, thank God, I can finally do what I want. And the number of times he must have seen demon leaders or, you know, demon kind and say, I don't want to hurt them, but my programming says otherwise. And to finally have a chance to work for who he sees as good people, not simply trying to destroy humanity, going against his own morals, but rather just wants good things for their people, you know, why wouldn't he want to help get that Philosopher's Stone? And I think that's what makes it so great. And I love the fact that he even comments on the book that he's reading, which is based on Abrad, and the fact that he's like, that doesn't even look like him. I love the little moments that really tell you, like, 
This man's been through the ringer. He's seen generations upon generations. So, you know, artist illustrations aren't always going to be the most historically accurate, and they're going to look maybe a little more intimidating than they actually were. I think that's what I really like about I'm Quitting Heroing, is that I honestly thought what the show would be initially would be more of a comedy with action, given the premise and everything that was happening, and to see the actual emotional journey that it's become. It's had action, it's had comedy, but it's actually, it has more emotion than I was ever anticipating. And that's what makes it so great. And I mean, it's one of those things where you could almost see it end in one season. You really could in a lot of ways, even though it's based on, from what I know anyway, an ongoing source of Tiro. Based on the pacing that they're going, like, if this was like an anime original, you would assume 12 episodes would be enough, right? You know, episode 9, Big reveal, 11 through 12, you know, get the stone, maybe happy-go-lucky, everyone lives happily ever after. Want to wrap it up, because I don't think they'll do an anime original ending, but I'm curious if there's going to be a good stopping point to leave it off, whether they decide to pursue a second season, or if it's just a decent enough stopping point to propel people to read the source. I don't know, but I can safely say, after eight episodes, it's been a nice, steady climb of a show. It's never really dipped, in my opinion. And even when I have episodes like these that I do consider slower than previous episodes, they're crucial for a story to remaining in my mind as something that's well written and thought out, rather than just the generic fantasy trash of the season that, hey, I can enjoy, but I'm not going to really remember once I no longer have a new episode to watch every single week. The voice actors definitely stole the show this week. I think Abrad himself I thought was like just perfect casting. Immediately, I knew I could trust this dude just because of the way, like, he was panicking, but it's not like he gave you a sense of, oh, as soon as Leo puts his sword down, he's gonna stab him in the shin and fly away. No, it just felt like a dude who got screwed over, and I could immediately tell, like, this was someone who was going to teach him a life lesson. I just was kind of expecting him to maybe get killed in the moment, right? I thought maybe the book he was reading at the start was maybe just, uh, you know, stuff that happened prior to that moment, but no, like, to see how he got through and how you have this very cool demeanor from Leo and just how he just doesn't understand in that moment, but of course, over the generations and wars that he fought, he definitely realizes such. And I love how he never forgot that moment. A man he knew for probably less than an hour got through to him to that degree that as soon as the moment came around, he took it up. Like, he didn't abandon what he was made for until he was allowed to abandon it without a sense of guilt and stuff, right? And I think that conversation with the Demon Lord and everyone will be very interesting because there is lies, but I think after helping each and every one of them and really knowing what we do about his backstory, I think it's not going to be hostile to the point of maybe what we got a taste of when he fought the Demon Lord prior to the show kicking off. I think it should work out. There might be a little drama, but I think it will work out given what we know, and I hope it does because Leo deserves his life that he chose and this is who he's choosing so I hope they don't toss him away like humanity did because this is who he wants to fight for but thoughts if you have any on what I consider to be a pretty incredible episode slower episode but still incredible for its character writing and motivation so thoughts if you have any down below leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one